Hey everybody, I'm Miles Leisher and we're backstage here with one of our all-time favorite guests, Congressman Barney Frank. Welcome back to Real Time. Thank How do you, you feel about the show tonight? Oh, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, actually, I learned from the, uh, the water expert that was, uh, uh, you know, an important piece of it and Bill was very funny as usual. Yeah, it's a huge issue going on. And I, I, on the water thing, absolutely, and it's, you know, people don't, don't see it yet and it's important to bring things to people's attention that haven't yet manifested themselves so they can deal with it. Exactly. And you are here tonight with a new book, Frank, and uh, you're always Frank, but you're also always funny. You killed it on the show tonight. Thank you. And that's also a really big part of this book. I mean, you are one of the... Well, one of the things I talk about in the book is that if you can use humor, and I've been lucky, look, I, you know, I have no sense of direction. I'm not, I have no, nothing good with, with mechanical things. I've been lucky enough to have a good sense of humor. You're trying to get a point across, and people are inundated with material. If you can make it funny, they're more likely to remember it. And that, so that becomes an important part of, of, of the messaging. Was there a point that you realized that you had a gift for this sort of thing? Yeah, when I was in school. Like yeah. When I was in school, um, I could make the other kids laugh and I could piss off the teachers. <laughs> and when did you start to, I mean, was it always part of your political life? Because yeah, it's kind of the, become kind of a defining uh, Yeah, I was, I, you know, I, I just, for one thing, I get bored if I can't fool around. But then I realized it was an effective political tool. One, you know, people don't like to be ridiculed, so kind of adds to the, well, maybe I better not argue with them. Mm -hmm. Secondly, as I said, it, it, people remember the point. I mean, I'll give you an example. I thought there was a terrible inconsistency with the right-wingers like Reagan saying, we're going to outlaw abortion, but then trying to dismantle every program that helped poor children if these women had to give birth to them. And I said, apparently, in their view, from the federal government standpoint, life begins at conception, but it ends at birth. And frankly, I believe that actually had an impact in persuading yeah. some of the right to life people that they were wrong to cut things like women's and infants and children's program. Well, you're fantastic at just completely disarming people with your humor. Was there somebody that was like a comedic inspiration? When you well, I love the, uh, the verbal comics. And by the way, some people have done a, uh, a documentary about me and they call it Compared to What, which is something I borrowed from a man named Henny Youngman. He was called the king of the one-liners. Right. Now in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, humor was based in part on guys making fun of their wives, mothers-in-law, they didn't want to get married. Well, Henny, and, Henny was famous for, yeah, take my wife. Take my wife, please. <laughs> uh, actually, the other one that I recently saw was, I lost my wife in a wishing well. Who knew they worked? <laughs> but he had one that wasn't just insulting, was actually quite profound. How's your wife compared to what? And that became my mantra Anytime I had to make a decision, do we do this, is this acceptable, compared to what? Because in public life, you don't have the luxury of molding something brand new. You've got to deal with the reality. And uh, so early on, that, that became a way to me, uh, for me both to justify the need to make hard choices and, and be funny about it. And I just have one more question about your book. You managed to get former Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson and Elizabeth Warren to write blurbs on the back here. How'd you manage that? I'm very proud of it, basically by being sensible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm a partisan Democrat. I start with a liberal position, but I also believe there's a need to, from there, see if you can negotiate. And, and I'm very proud that these two people who are seen as very different, although they have somewhat in common more than people think, uh, both sort of were, were approving of my work. I'm very proud of that. Would you like to see Senator Warren run for president? No, I think she's right not to do that. She's a very powerful force for good, for protecting financial reform. She understands if she began to even hint that she was running for president, her credibility would get destroyed, the media would start picking her apart. And at this point, there really are not nearly as many differences between her and Hillary Clinton as people might think. I, Hillary Clinton is representative of a broad consensus on, on liberal values. And if we were to focus on a few differences, rather than getting together behind that, that, that general program, we'd weaken ourselves. What about you? Will you run? Well, I will be uh, 75 in a week, and uh, thinking that I was too old to be in Congress, that would certainly kind of rule out uh, President. And, and while my husband, Jim... Are you kidding me? You're filled with energy. You can handle that. My husband, Jim, has been... Well, you know, you don't know what it'll be like four years later. My husband, Jim, has re adapted remarkably to the political world, but I, I think being the first man would probably try his patience. <laughs> Well, I'll leave it with that. Check out Frank. It's on the bookshelves now. Thank you. Congressman, thank you so much Thanks for joining us. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.